This 10th year Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Dale Mulcahy, Matt Zaglin, and Kelly Cook. On this episode of DTNS, why Microsoft only cares if the US, UK, and Europe approve its acquisition, we'll explain why that is, plus your favorite map apps. And it's not AI, it's the humans replacing the game NPCs. Turn about his fair play, NPCs. We got you. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, July 19th, 2023 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Gang Gang, Gang Gang, <laughs> I'm Sarah Lane. From Salt Lake City, I am Scott Johnson. And I'm the show's producer, Richard Chang. <laughs> if- If you're laughing hilariously at Sarah Lane right now, uh, you're going to love our main segment today. If you're not, you will explain in our main segment today. (laughs) You might also know what I'm doing and also not be laughing, in which case, sorry in advance. And and then uh, you'll want to comment on today's segment today. (laughs) All right. There's no wrong answers here. Let's start with the gang gang. Bloomberg's Mark Ehrman sources say that Apple is developing a chatbot in its own large language models framework called Ajax. Ajax runs on Google Cloud and was built with the Google's Jax machine learning framework. Apparently, internally, some engineers call it Apple GPT. Employees have also used it to do product prototyping, reportedly anyway, although Apple is not officially... Uh, commenting and has not a set a set of product strategy yet, but may make an AI announcement later this year. Mm, Apple. Earlier this week, Intel announced it would discontinue its small next unit of computing, the NUC PC, and we were all very sad. Uh, but it said it would seek a partner to keep them alive. And it has. Intel announced it gave Asus a non-exclusive license, so there could be others joining this party, uh, to use the NUC product designs. Asus can manufacture 10th gen through 13th gen NUC systems, develop its own NUC units based on new Intel chip designs, and offer NUC system support. NUC, NUC, NUC. NUC, NUC, NUC. The UK's Competition and Markets Authority announced that it has taken an initial view that Broadcom's proposed acquisition of VMware would not substantially reduce competition. The CMA will consult on these findings and also issue a final decision on September 12th. EU regulators approved the deal last week, so the US Federal Trade Commission has yet to decide if it will sue to block the deal. Roblox announced it will soon let developers offer subscriptions on its platform. Roblox already offers the ability to sell you stuff, but they're all one-time things, like a one-time fee, one-time virtual item, special pass to an experience, stuff like that. It has not allowed ongoing charges. Now it will. No word on when subscriptions will roll out. But if you're looking at who's going to be the metaverse, Roblox just took a step forward because Fortnite doesn't allow direct sales of anything, virtual items or subscriptions. Not yet, anyway. Not yet. (laughs) Uh, Threads received its first major update for iOS, now offering a follows tab in the activity feed to see if you're on it who recently followed your account. The app supports translations for post-text as well. Users can also subscribe to unfollowed users to get notifications of new posts. Maybe you want to just keep track of somebody and some updated numbers on threads are as follows data ai estimates that threads passed 150 million downloads and that 32 percent of those came from india followed by brazil the u.s mexico and japan oh there we go i i think people forget this stuff when they're we're making their snap judgments about social networks so, mm-hmm. well nobody uses yeah. it like oh have you talked to the entire subcontinent of india about that because maybe they have a different idea mm-hmm. indeed all right let's talk about microsoft and activision blizzard because you would think Perhaps the story could not continue, but boy, it has legs. So Microsoft and Activision Blizzard agree to new terms of their ongoing deal. The most significant change is to the deadline to avoid a breakup fee. There are actually three deadlines now, so let's talk about those. The breakup fee is what either side would pay if one walked away from the deal. That's at $3 billion. It's a big breakup fee, but it rises to $3.5 billion on August 29th and $4.5 billion on September 15th. The drop-dead deadline for the deal to get done is now October 18th. So it has been extended 
but there's a lot of money at play here. The staggered breakup fee schedule is meant to encourage both sides to get the deal done early if possible. The extension of the deal also includes new provisions to carve out some businesses in the UK if that's what it takes to get this merger done. Microsoft really wants to get the merger done. So that's what they did. Tom, tell us why they did all of this. Yeah. So again, those those fees don't happen if the date passes. They they just go up the longer it takes in case the deal fall apart. Uh, let's take a, a step back and look at the calendar here. Microsoft right now is negotiating with the UK Competition and Markets Authority. Well, I don't know if they're doing it right now. They might be at the pub, but you know <laughs> they're in the middle of this negotiation uh, to see if they can change the deal in a way that gets the UK to remove its objections. It sounds like everybody thinks that's possible. But on August 2nd, so just a couple weeks from now, the United States Federal Trade Commission will be taking its objections to this deal in front of an administrative judge. Now, if it were to win that, this whole thing gets a lot more complicated again. But given the way the judge ruled against giving a preliminary injunction, it's probably going to lose. So we're probably not going to see the FTC prevail on August 2nd. But August 2nd is worth paying attention to. If the FTC loses, August 29th is the next important date. Microsoft wants to settle with the UK by then because the breakup fee goes, to, uh, goes up if they pass that date. And because that is the UK's new deadline to make its final decision on its investigation. So everybody would like to get it done. That seems to be the new, the new end line. Now, if it doesn't settle with the UK by August 29th, it could be that the UK would extend its own deadline again. They just extended it from July 18th. They could extend it again if everybody's very positive and they just need a few more days to do the paperwork. Or we might start looking at whether Microsoft would carve out Activision Blizzard in the UK as a separate company, something the new merger agreement now specifically allows. You just heard Sarah tell you that, but that also becomes very complicated and people would like to avoid that as well. Scott, does this make sense to you? It does. Um, we've been covering this pretty extensively on Core and also every time I'm on here, it feels like a new breaking bit of the news is happening. Uh, so this all makes sense to me. It's clear that Microsoft and Activision both want this to go through and have through the entire process. So so they are going to go to whatever lengths it takes to to separate things out. I mean, if something catastrophic happened, like somebody's stock went, uh, took a dive or took a leap, they may have to have additional communication about what that means to the value of the acquisition of the merger. But sure. for the most part, unless something crazy like that happens, I think that they are both sort of in tandem willing to do whatever it takes to get through these hurdles. And uh, this feels like the right timeline. It all still feels like there's a ticking bomb, though. And I think that's important. I think that's on purpose. You know, there's, there's a reason why they didn't say, you know what, let's just put it off till October. They could probably have done that, but they didn't do that. Well, why? Well, they want to keep the heat on the regulatory yeah, they want to get it done. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, it, for sure. So this this is both against them and for them in a weird way to have these deadlines. And um, if they do end up having to segment things out so the UK is happy, no one's going to love that. No. But I think they could pull that off if they had to. So yeah, yeah. It feels like a you know the gun in the drawer uh, approach. Yeah. They, they don't want to open that drawer if they don't they don't have to. But uh, just to summarize for folks on those dates, August second is the check in. Like, is the FTC going to win? No, okay. And then August 29th is the big win. Right, right. Well, and then uh, it, for anybody who has been following Microsoft stock, a uh, company not doing terribly. <laughs> <laughs> you thought I was going to say terribly well, didn't you? No, no, it's it's actually stock stock is stock is good for stockholders right now. However, related to all of this, we got an email from Damon, um, and this I think might echo some sentiments of other people. Damon was wondering, so why is Microsoft only waiting on certain countries to give them approval to purchase Activision Blizzard? before that can complete the purchase. So we seem to hear about companies waiting for approval, not just Microsoft, but others from places like the UK, EU, Germany, the US, but not from places like Mexico, some countries in South America, some countries in Africa. Do other countries not care about such things? You know, I think Damon sort of says in parentheses, although he didn't write it, or do we not care about them if we are Microsoft? Damon says, why don't they wait for approval from every country that they sell their product in or do business in? 
Uh, this is a great question, Damon. I covered this on an episode of Editor's Desk. So some of you patrons already know this answer. Uh, if you're a patron at the $5 level and up, you might have listened to that. But here's the short version. They have approved, at least the countries that have a law requiring approval. 40 countries have approved the Activision Blizzard merger. Um, that's not news when they approve. It's only news when they don't approve. Most of the countries that have not approved either don't have a law requiring approval or they're the UK. Uh, the US, for example, does not have a law requiring a merger to be approved. In the US, what you do is you have the Federal Trade Commission sue to stop a deal. And that's what the FTC is doing with this one. In countries that have a law about this, it's usually referred to as merger acquisition control. Uh, about 80 to 100 countries, depending on how you look at it, have some form of merger acquisition control law. And if you do business in a country that has a law like that, in other words, if you're selling stuff to citizens, if you've got World of Warcraft or Call of Duty available, uh, then you are subject to those rules. Now, some countries, the reason you've only seen 40, don't approve until after the deal, which seems weird, but that's how it works. Most countries, though, you have to apply for approval before if they have a law about it. And in practice, Almost all countries approve mergers. It's a paperwork thing. They just want to have it down on paper. What are the terms? Who's paying what? They're not trying to stop mergers. They're trying to record them. In fact, China rarely objects to a merger. They have such strict rules about whether you can operate in their country or not that if you meet those rules, you're probably fine. They're probably going to allow your merger. The EU and the U.S. have stricter antitrust laws and have had them for longer, so they are more likely to object. And a lot of the other countries that might object are perfectly happy to let the U.S. and EU spend their time and money to investigate this stuff and then sort of take their lead. They're, they're sort of outsourcing the investigation to the U.S. and EU. So that's why you hear about the U.S. EU and now the U.K. that the U.K. has exited the EU uh, because they're the ones that other countries are looking to for investigation, although most countries just rubber stamp stuff. Well, you might have also heard that Netflix has removed at least one subscription plan for new users in the U.S. and the U.K., but first removed it in Canada. And this is the basic ad-free plan for a $10 in the U.S. Uh, subscription that lets users watch Netflix content on a single screen in 720p quality. So it's limited, but it was the free non-ad-supported version, the cheapest one, rather. Existing, not free, $10. Uh, existing users can use this plan going forward. So if you're on this plan and you say, what? No, it, it, you're, you're probably fine. But if you're a new subscriber, or perhaps you've lapsed and are coming back to Netflix and are, are, are a returning subscriber, you no longer have this option when you sign up. UK-based website Codebusters first noticed this change and mused that Netflix might discontinue the plan in all countries where it has rolled out an ad-supported standard plan because it sounds like that's going pretty well, huh, Tom? Yeah, it's worth reminding folks that the ad-supported plan first launched in November in Canada and Mexico, a couple days later uh, in the U.S., U.K., France, Germany, Italy, Australia, Japan, Korea, Brazil. Uh, and in April this year, Netflix updated basic with ads to standard with ads. They renamed it and it supported simultaneous streaming on two devices, full HD resolution, which means 1080p, cost you $7 a month in the US, five pounds a month in the UK. And the company said its ad supported tier now has more than 5 million users worldwide. So they consider it a success. Data from Antenna shows that Netflix's ad supported plans probably account for around 17 to 20% of new signups, uh, at least between March and June of their estimation period. So Scott, it sounds like ad supported options are working for Netflix. Was the basic without ads just no longer attractive to the company, given the interest elsewhere? I think that the the fact that there are so many competing services that come at you with an entry level, either no pay or low pay ad supported version of the of their service, I think forced them into this, at least to consider this. Uh, I think prior prior to all of that, uh, when I say success, but I guess I just mean the, the, the flooding of market of, of potential cheaper and less expensive or even free options for people. I don't think they had any interest in that at all. In fact, I feel like they said as much years ago that they just were not interested in ad-supported versions of their of their content. 
Um, but I just think that writing was on the wall the minute other services did it and have seen success with it. And now they're seeing, I mean, those are, that's not small numbers. You may look at it and go, well, 5 million in the larger scheme of Netflix things isn't that many people, but that's a, that's still a lot of people. But it was, it was, you know, it was a large uptick in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the the other thing. It was fast, right? Really quick. Yeah. Even if Netflix was like, huh, we really didn't think ad supported was the way to go. If you have enough users who clearly care about it in a variety of markets, I could see the company just saying, all right, well, let's get rid of the tier that doesn't seem to have the most traction. And it sounds like that that formerly basic ad free tier uh, just didn't make sense anymore. Um, You know, again, if you're a legacy user, you're not getting kicked off of it, at least not now. But uh, you can't sign up for it now. Uh, it, Netflix wants to point you in other directions that might work better for you based on what other people like. Have any has anyone here experienced the ad version of things? I'm curious how, what the I haven't frequency tried it, is. No. Yeah, I've either. never you no, know, I've never I've never had an ad supported version of Netflix. Mm. But I mean I I have on Hulu and a variety of other sources. I mean, I am um, sources of content. I yeah. sometimes apparently think the ad load on Netflix is very low compared to some of the others. Is it? Hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's, and that's I mean, even, I ask. even sometimes when I'm getting ads and maybe they're a little invasive, it's like, I know why they're there. I can't really think of a situation recently where I've paid for something on some level or, or maybe not at all. Um, and thought, well, this is just, you know, outlandish. I think yeah. it's, I usually, I, I, I kind of, you know, turn a blind eye, I guess. It, to the, it is a little to annoying ads. to see that price, six ninety nine, and remember that we were darn close to that for what Netflix was in those early days. Yeah, I and, think that one of the reasons this is getting so much buzz is that it's seven dollars a month in the U.S. for ads, and yeah. then practically double the price, fifteen forty nine for the next mm-hmm. tier without mm-hmm. ads. Yeah. Uh, I think it's also notable that this happened exactly the same way in Canada on June twenty sixth. And you didn't see nearly as much outrage then. Why were you not outraged for the Canadians? Why? Uh, look, I'm always looking out for my Canadian brothers and sisters. But in this particular case, I think I just slept on that one. Uh, you poor people up there. You struggled through this this transition. And I hope you're all okay. <laughs> I can I can hear the Canadians yelling right now. We told you. You just weren't listening. <laughs> and also, uh, we're used to you ignoring us. Uh, fine. Uh, all right. yeah. Uh, well, Canadian or otherwise, if you have feedback about anything that gets brought up on the show, get in touch with us. There's so many ways. Uh, we have at DTNS show on Twitter and Mastodon, MSTDN dot social at daily tech news show on TikTok. I just posted on our DTNS TikTok today. I got a question for you. Go check it out. And DTNS picks on Instagram. And of course, because it's on Instagram, also on threads. Find us. We're there. In many modern games, non-playable characters, NPCs, are an integral part of the experience. They inhabit the world you're in. A lot of times they provide clues or context that help you along your journey, sometimes just sort of being there to make the world feel more real. This could be anything from a character sitting outside a store who tells you how he took an arrow to the knee, uh, to Zelda herself, since in The Legend of Zelda, as they point out in the Washington Post today, you're playing as Link. You're trying to save Zelda. Zelda is technically an NPC, just a really important one. Uh, You probably think, if you haven't listened closely to the tease, that we're going to talk about AI and NPCs again, like we did back in March. But no, this time we're talking about humans replacing NPCs. Sarah, explain, please. Okay, I'm going to do my I'm going to do my best on this, uh, because if you're if you're if you're familiar, you're going to go, oh, gosh, here we go. But if you're not, let's start from the beginning. So this is an interesting story. NPCs aren't really designed to do that much in most games besides exist. Like Tom said, they might have, you know, a line of dialogue or maybe two or three, but there's not much to them. They're, They're not really helping your gameplay they're just sort of there so they often get uh, a line that if you continue to interact with them might get repeated over and over or you might get to a point where you go okay yeah this character isn't doing anything anymore i'm gonna go ahead and mosey on my journey enter the world of tiktok live now this is where some creators you have to have a certain amount of followers uh who have a big enough following have streaming live access. This is not unlike how you might go live on Twitch. 
some of those creators, uh, a small subset, but a subset, are acting like NPCs, non-playable characters, for views and also sometimes for money. A TikTok user named Pinky Doll made the rounds recently. Boy, has she gotten some attention. She's a very popular streamer who acts as an NPC based on the gifts that she gets while she is live. She's also very good at this. Now you might say, okay, well, what is she doing? How does she act like a non-playable character? This isn't a game, right? This is just a live stream. For example, you send her an ice cream and she says, hmm, ice cream's so good. You send her a cowboy hat and she says, ooh, you got me feeling like a cowgirl. You send her a GG emoji and she says, gang, gang. This is all in real time. You have hundreds of gifts pouring in at once. So there's a fun aspect to it. If I want to send her a gift and I get thanked, I, you know, feel seen and heard as an audience member. It's not unlike being thanked in general on any live stream. You know, Scott, you might go live and I might, you know, send you some money over whatever platform you're using and you say, thank you. I am mm -hmm. SarahLane.com, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But this seems to be a little different because it's very specific than what streamers already do. No? Well, there, it's an interesting bit of performance that sets it apart. Definitely, if you saw saw somebody streaming your favorite game and you sent them some bits on Twitch, uh, you might even get a little animated something pop up on screen that says so-and-so gave you bits. And then the, the streamer might say, hey, thanks so-and-so for those bits. Think of that as the what we're used to. That's like nothing, no big deal. What this yeah. reminds me of is, is that this bit on rapid fire, machine gun style, interaction between you and the streamer and all the streamer is doing for some reason gang gang should be gg usually stands for good game so i'm not sure where we got gang gang from but they still they're using it as gang gang but if that's what you want them to say and then they say it immediately you get this immediate thing of oh i've interacted i paid for this i got noticed they said thank you and then they moved on but she doesn't go off and then do other things on her stream she's just going and going and going and taking these requests and taking these requests joe joe has the uh has the example if we want to throw it up you should uh, yeah. uh and gang gang. here mm, ice cream so good thank you jackie gang 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 oh special gang gang rah, rah, rah. gang 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 gang, balloon. It's like a glitched NPC. Gang, gang. It's so gang, gang. Mm, That was good. Lemon. Yeah. He ha, yes. You got me feeling like a cowgirl. Let me run it, huh? <laughs> he ha, yes. You got me feeling like a cowgirl. Let me run it, huh? So and, it, well, and it's Slay and it's you know you might Slay go. Huh? This is insanity. I mean, she's saying the same thing over and over. Well, it yeah. all depends on what she's getting, right? Now. Mm. There, there's a part of me who's like, yes, this is very silly. I don't, I have never seen any of these streams actually in live form. I've only mm. seen stuff that's been shared on, you know, first I saw this on Twitter and I've seen it on TikTok uh, afterwards, you know, but these go on for hours. Yeah, hours. I saw her. So I saw one live. This was her. She popped up in my feed. Don't know why. Just happened to. Because she's super popular, probably. That's yeah, why. and it's after I had heard about this. So this was kind of, I was like, oh, oh my gosh, I'm getting fed. Her account didn't even know her name prior to this. And uh, she was actually there for five hours. I didn't watch all five, five hours. Five hours? Yeah, she'd been there three, was going to go that's for another exhausting. two. And at one point, only one time did I see her break character and yell at a dog or a cat or something. Um, and it was Well, a and now weird. that's the thing, too. And that's right. that's become the thing of like watching the NPC live feed where you you're waiting for them to kind of go like, ah, yeah. I need a glass of water or like, Hey dog, stop yelling. Gang well, gang. And, and that's, Thank that's you. kind of the Ice key cream. here. Like I was the comparison I can think of is let's say you're playing Nintendo dogs on your Nintendo DS, or you're playing a Pokemon game. You got to feed your Pokemon. You got to feed your pets and some of these pet based games. Um, and when you do that, you expect the little, animated character to go mm, you fed me mm, you fed me and if you do it over and over you're gonna get that kind of repetition you get that dopamine mm -hmm. rush right? and we're mm -hmm. used to that mm -hmm. from inanimate computer generated creatures or people we're used to this when it what makes this different and why i think it's taken off so crazy and gotten so much attention is this we know this is a flesh and blood human on the other side and we know that we are interacting with that person a lot like we are used to in these other ways. But I'm getting this real live person to acknowledge me, to make the sound, to move on and do it again. And it's a combination that I think is really alluring for a lot of people. And it is easy to judge it and go, ah, oh, this is too weird for me. We're, we're living in cyberpunk town. 
uh, and maybe we are, maybe these, maybe these are early days of cyberpunk conversion, but, but, uh, uh, at the end of the day, I, I think the motivations are very similar. It's just kind of hyper realized. Uh, and it is very gamified whether we, whether we yeah. notice it or not. It's, this reminds me of playing games, but in a much stranger way, I guess. I think, yeah. I mean, listen, if, if this is something that appeals to you, then, you know, then it does. There are a lot of people, um, who, you know, I feel like there's like, there's sort of, three popular ways that people respond to this either i have no idea what this is the second is i know what this is and i don't like it nobody should be doing this you know this you know feels like a human who's you know in a cage kind of thing and the third is i know what this is and this human is making money and she's really he or she or they are very good at this and this is actually kind of fun and you know this is a way to sort of gamify the gamified things um those first two reactions are the common reactions to everything that happens Mm -hmm. right in the world not even just on the internet Mm -hmm. like i don't understand what this is i think it's dumb so throw those out because you're going to get that at every new thing it is interesting to see people engage in this you Mm -hmm. know and Mm -hmm. and have fun with it I think it was better when there was more of them standing there bobbing before they got popular. And then you send the emoji and you, you make that happen. That manic presentation that we just saw uh, of pinky doll is, is its own form of manic entertainment, but it it's not as much like an NPC anymore. Is it? It's also a but sign I mean, that it wouldn't be so manic now. if she didn't get so much attention, right? right? Yeah, exactly. no, I know. If you got yeah, yeah. if you got a little coin or something, you know, every 30 seconds, then it would be a very different experience. Yeah. It is a reminder too. There's some game theory in this, but um, there, there's, there's a once in a while you you remind yourself that a lot of what I'm doing is about numbers going up. When I play a video game, when I play Diablo, I have the beautiful world it's set in. I see these amazing graphics and voiceover and story. And then, really, at the end of the day, though, what I'm trying to do is get numbers to go up. I'm trying to get loot and get numbers up. And if you start boiling that down to its most primordial ooze. That's what this is. Yeah, this dopamine is people hit. wanting to see. Yeah, dopamine yep. hits, watching numbers go up, watching things flash on the screen, and watching a reaction. And it's worth your two bucks, your three bucks, your four bucks. One of one of the best. Uh, I I have gone down quite a few internet holes uh, over the last week about this because I find it so fascinating. And one of the best responses to someone saying this is so stupid. Why would anyone do this? Nobody should be participate in. They were like. This woman is very talented. She should be an auctioneer. Like, yeah. Like, probably take none a pay of us cut. could do what she's doing. Like <laughs> yeah. there is a talent here. No, we're just, no, you know, we're, 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 we're making it happen in real time. No yep. cap. Yeah. All right. Let's check out the mailbag. <sighs> let's do it. We got a lot of feedback from our conversation yesterday about uh, map apps that we use. Uh, specifically, we were talking about Apple Maps potentially being a lot better than they used to be. Here are a few examples. Renard writes in, one of the reasons that Google Maps had always been better is because it had years and years of data, including the time. When iPhones were using Google Maps, ever since Apple Maps came to the phone, I chose to use Apple Maps because I wanted Apple to get that data in order for the app to get better. If you don't give a data, it won't get better. Matthew wrote in to say he was a big fan of Apple Maps, especially through CarPlay, until he moved to Ecuador. He writes, Apple Maps is largely able to locate very little around Quito, Ecuador, or Bogota, Colombia, two cities with populations in the millions. I can understand not having great rural data out in the Amazon, but to not be usable any of the major cities makes it useless. This remains true in all the major cities in Ecuador as I've explored the country. I've largely given up on Apple Maps for other than learning geography. Mm, that is that is a that that's a good note. Depends on where you are. Jordan also wrote in uh, saying they prefer Apple Maps for turn by turn directions, CarPlay, and transit directions, but still give an Apple Maps the high marks for cross platform nope. accessibility. Still gives Google Maps high marks. Google Maps, rather, yes. Thank you. Cross platform accessibility and retail and restaurant reviews because there's, you know, that that Google data. Uh, Matthew did say. Oh, wait, was it Matthew? No, one, one, one person wrote in and said that uh, they they like uh, Waze, um, but most people were talking about Google Maps or Apple Maps as if those were the two options. So it feels like those are the two everybody uses. 
Yeah. Well, I'm if surprised. you are listening and saying, well, no, but I still have another option. Do yeah. write in. <laughs> MapQuest <laughs> users. MapQuest. Yeah. People yeah. are still printing their MapQuest somewhere, someplace. Open else. Map users. Let's hear from you. <laughs> I remember Map Blast? That was the Yahoo MapQuest alternative. Oh, yeah. I was a map blast user. I don't really know why. Uh, Well, uh, no matter what kind of map uh, service you use, Scott Johnson, we sure are glad that you make your way into this show. Um, uh, You know, if we're lucky, uh, once a week, sometimes more. Let folks know where to keep up with the rest of your work. Well, sure. If you're interested in uh, all the hot takes around this Microsoft Activision uh, merger business or really anything in the realm of video games coverage, I have a show every week that does just that. It's called Core. It happens on Thursdays. And uh, Core is me and my two buddies talking about video games and doing it, I think, the best there is. We really like this show. I think you'll like it, too. So check it out. That's at frogpants.com slash core. Or just look for Core wherever you get your shows. Yesterday, I had GPT-4 write the Patreon promotion. Mm. We got zero patrons as a result. <laughs> oh, no. So today... Today, they can smell a, it, Tom. It's a human appeal. It's a human mm-hmm. appeal. If you're listening to the free feed and you support value for value, you like what we do and you want us to keep doing it, consider signing up. Patreon.com slash DTNS. It's a human you could, asking. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I liked that. I liked it. It was very NPR of you. Yeah. Uh, you can also catch the show live. Well, well, hold on. Hold on. I wasn't done. Patreon, stick around for the extended oh. show. Good day, Internet. We're going to talk about Google's pilot program that has a few thousand of its employees working without the Internet. They cut off the Internet for their employees. Another great incentive to come into the office for Google. Stick around. We're going to talk about that. Um, sorry, Tom. Something about the humanization of all of this. I know. You know threw me for a human. loop. Yeah, uh, but just a reminder: we as humans, and we really are, uh, do the show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern at 2000 UTC, and we'd love to have you join us live if you can. We're on demand too. But if you want to know more, DailyTechNewsShow.com/live is where to go to find more about that. We are back doing it all again tomorrow with Justin Robert Young joining us. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at FrogPants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>